This is not some fancy remote control toy. This is Ben. So Ben stands for Bathymetric Explorer and Navigator. Uh, bathymetric is a fancy word that kind of means topographic, like topographic map, but used for underwater. Underwater mapping used to produce navigational charts for safe boating, safe shipping, and so much more. Val Schmidt is project manager for the University of New Hampshire's Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping. There's a million other applications for everything from geotechnical surveys for wind farms and habitat surveys for fisheries, whether it's ground fish or fish in the water column, and a myriad of other sort of marine science applications of all kinds that, that robotic boats can do. Robotic and largely autonomous, Ben's crew is comfortably ashore in a sophisticated trailer, monitoring its six cameras for traffic and recording what Ben maps below the surface with its state-of-the-art sonar system. Schmidt says robotic marine vehicles are safer and less expensive for mapping and exploration. It's a rapidly expanding field, and Ben is a first-of-its-kind vehicle developed by UNH. We've sort of pushed the edge, kind of the bleeding edge bit of trying to make it work and, uh, and engineering solutions to make it practical, not just driving from one place to another, but doing it safely and collecting data that's actually useful. Which it has done. It was part of a mapping project in the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary in Lake Huron that discovered the Ironton, a 190-foot schooner that sank in 1894. The sonar images, if you've seen them, it's as though the ship sort of sank and just rested like sitting upright with all the rigging and intact and the mast intact still. Uh, it looks like it just landed right on the seafloor and the sonars have the ability to reveal things in such a kind of a magical and dramatic way. It's, it's really neat. Ben also traveled to the South Pacific on a project with renowned explorer Bob Ballard, who famously found the Titanic wreck. The team was in search of Amelia Earhart's plane. It's always a challenge to pack up your kit and ship it to the far side of the planet and make it work over there. And the really exciting go, unfortunately, we didn't find Amelia Earhart's aircraft, but we made a heck of an effort and, and that search will continue, I'm sure. Natalie Cook and Jenna Enot are keeping close tabs on Ben today in a nearby chase boat. They are both pursuing a master's in ocean engineering at UNH and believe the ocean floor is Earth's last unexplored frontier. I think it's kind of miraculous that we haven't explored so much of the ocean, even though like, we've been exploring outer space for years now. We have 3D renderings and maps of Mars, of the moon, <laughs> but we live here. We, this yeah. is the planet we live on, but we still haven't mapped the whole ocean floor. And especially with global warming, we, we need to explore our oceans more. Growing up, I always loved mapping. Every time we went anywhere, I needed to get like an atlas or something to kind of just see what the area was like. Just so much of our planet, like 70% of it's water, and we don't even know what's underneath the surface. And I just really want to be able to help and kind of participate in that exploration. Five years ago, we spent time on the university's fully crewed mapping vessel, Gulf Surveyor. But now Ben offers the promise of autonomous operation. Think. Roomba for ocean mapping. Schmidt envisions fleets of autonomous surface vehicles performing all kinds of tasks, while the crew can be almost anywhere in the world. We'll be doing the uh, same kind of mapping that the crewed vessel is doing, but sitting here where it's nice and stable and nobody gets seasick and we can have a cup of coffee and watch things go and collect really fantastic state-of-the-art data for nautical charting. Wow, oh, and UNH believes that there will be both manned and unmanned surface vehicles performing ocean mapping work in the coming decades. They do. They believe there's a place for both, which is why they think it's wise to expose students to both methodologies. Uh, ben, for example, only looks down about 1,000 feet and 4,000 feet wide. Really deep sea mapping requires bigger vessels and manned vessels. But NOAA has started to order some of these autonomous robotic vehicles. I want to know it's down there. <laughs> it's so interesting. All right, coming up from the woods to the sea.